three, two, one. Dead Stripper, Chapter 12, Scene 37. The next morning, Jess is stepping out of the shower after toweling off. First, she slips into a pair of sexy white panties from Victoria's Secret. Next comes a tank top, also white, and bare midriff. Then she stretches her arms in the air, takes a deep breath, and lowers her arms. Then she walks out of the bedroom and down the hallway toward the living room. She finds a drape drawn to block sunlight from streaming through the sliding doors. And she sees Pablo sitting on the sofa. He's wearing a Sixer sweatshirt, blue bikini briefs, and black anklets. He's holding an Xbox controller and playing some NBA game on the big screen TV. She sees his jeans tossed on the floor next to a pair of LeBron James sneakers. She pivots without saying a word and returns to the bedroom. A few moments pass. She returns carrying a pillow, advances toward the sofa quickly and quietly, then swats Pablo on the back of the head with the pillow. The swing's not meant to be a knockout blow, but not a love tap either. It's hard enough to make him drop the controller onto the sofa. What the fuck, Pablo says. Dick, can't you see I'm in the middle of a game? He picks up the controller and goes right back to the game. You're a dick. First, he swapped me in the head with a goddamn pillow. He never takes his eyes off the TV screen. And now you're calling me names. What the fuck's going on? Like you don't know? No, I don't know. He keeps looking at the screen, keeps playing the game. You're lucky I'm not a violent man. Why? What would you do? Kill me? You never know, he says. We need to talk. He keeps playing the game. All you do is play games. She moves between Pablo and the TV screen, then does an enticing pirouette. How about playing a game with me? Hang on. He tries to look around her. Almost halftime. We don't need to wait until halftime. The way you play my game, you can get back to your game before halftime starts. Very funny, he says. You know, I had positive expectations about last night. About what? He finally takes a break from the game to look at her. About a man and a woman having sex. There was a party here last night. Plenty of alcohol flowing. Yet nothing happened. You never even came into the bedroom. I can't remember the last time we did it. You got something going on the side? I refuse to qualify that with an answer. It's like, you place no value on our relationship. Pablo doesn't respond. Well, she asks, do you? You know I do, he says. I'm not so sure anymore. You certainly don't show it. That's nonsense, he says. Do you love me? I refuse to qualify that with an answer. A simple yes or no will do. He still doesn't answer. When we first started going out, everything progressed smoothly. I fell in love with you and believe you loved me too. I could see a natural progression. Love, marriage, children. Happily ever after till death do us part. And you don't see that anymore, he says? No. You're way off, he says. Prove it. She strikes another sexy pose. Do me right now. Right here on the sofa. On the floor, for crying out loud. I don't care where. Your choice. Just do me right now. Can't. Why not? What time is it, he asks. What difference does that make? I have an appointment, he says, with some prospective investors. I'm trying to put a deal together. What kind of deal? Don't worry your pretty little head, he says. Don't worry your pretty little head. Jess imitates his words with emphasis and disdain. Don't worry your pretty little head. That's all you say anymore. We've been together for almost a year now, but I still have no idea what makes you tick. Don't worry your pretty little head, he says. See what I mean? I don't even know where you stay when you're not here. You know where I live, he says. All I know is what you told me. Somewhere between Kensington and Fishtown. But you never took me there, and I never set one foot inside your door. Told you a million times, he starts to say. Yeah, yeah, bad neighborhood, crime and drugs. That's the way it is, he says, and I don't want anything to happen to you. Bullshit, I'm a big girl, willing to take my chances. Well, I'm not, he says. And you still neglected to come up with a plausible explanation for ignoring me on the day I got fired. You just fucking ignored me. I told you what happened, he said meeting some new investors about some new software aimed at sports betting, designed to enhance their chances of winning and maximizing their profits. Bullshit. Look, he says, 
I go to work every goddamn day, busting my ass to become the best software developer around because I'm trying to make enough money so you never have to work another day in your life. I never asked you to do that. All I ask in return, he says, is that you show a little understanding instead of nagging me all the time. You think I nag you? That's all you do, he said. That's all you've been doing since you walked in here and hit me over the head with that goddamn pillow. You're like, all you do is play video games. You never do me anymore. You never let me stay at your place. You never this. You never that. Just one nag after another. Really? Is that the way you see it? Exactly the way I see it, he says. Fine. Then from now on, do whatever the fuck you want. Play your stupid fucking games until the fucking cows come the fuck home. But play them somewhere else. I'm done. What are you talking about, he says. I'm done with you. I don't deserve this. I deserve somebody who gives a shit about me, but you don't. And I'm not spending one more second of my life with such an inconsiderate dick. So pack up your shit, dick. Pack up your precious game. Get the fuck out and stay the fuck out. So that's it for chapter 12. And look, I finally got that shade this morning. Dead Strippers available as a paperback and an ebook at Amazon and most booksellers. And I'll see you next time for chapter 13.